Senator Sullivan, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, General, thank you. Senator. Thank you and your family. Um, very much appreciated our discussion yesterday. I, I believe you are exceptionally well qualified for this position. Uh, I'd like you to brag a little bit, if you don't mind. Can you just let the committee and the American people know some of your background and experiences and education as it relates to Russia? Um, that asking me to brag is the hardest question you could ask me, Senator. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, we want you to brag. Um, I want you to brag. So, um, Very impressive. Just I, Russia, focus, education. Sure. I, gr I graduated Billets. Princeton in 1987, where I did not look at Russia. I graduated with a degree in biology. I entered the Army. I immediately uh, was stationed in Italy with the Parachute Infantry Battalion. Uh, in that role, we studied Russia closely because that was our main opponent during the end of the Cold War. Uh, as I came out of company command, sir, I became a Russian foreign area officer. My wife and I studied Russian together at the Defense Language Institute for a year. Then I went to... So you speak Russian? I do. Yes, I do. And you've studied Russian military history? Russian Absolutely. strategy? I got a degree Russian from tactics. Yale University in Russian You've had Eastern billets European that have studies. solely focused on Russia? I have lived in Moscow for months at a time. I have um, traveled all over the former Soviet space. I have had fellowships at the George Marshall Center. In I Germany? Was, in Germany. I was the... Um, I was uh, on the Russia desk for the Joint Staff. So I would five. say Russia desk for the Joint Staff? I was, sir. So that's every day getting up, focusing on Russia's, the challenges? Absolutely, Senator. So I would say you are Vladimir Putin's worst nightmare and couldn't be more qualified than probably any other member of the military. So, again, I want to thank you for your service. Can you clearly define succinctly, because I have a bunch of questions, our top strategic goals in Ukraine? Yes, Senator. We want Ukraine to emerge from this conflict independent and free. We want the NATO alliance to be unified and as strong as ever. And we want to do these things without engaging in a war with Russia. Thank you. You know, there's a lot of discussion, you've already said, about NATO being energized, unified, I'm a huge supporter of NATO. I was actually at NATO headquarters right after the invasion in, in February. Uh, I was a big supporter of EDI. I'm a supporter of the Finland-Sweden accessions, supported robust military, disappointed that the president once again put forward a budget that cuts defense spending uh, in real dollars. I supported U.S. economic and military aid since February, $54 billion. But I do want to say here, and hopefully some of our NATO allies are watching this hearing, um, there's grumbling out there. My constituents in Alaska are probably the most pro-military constituents, Americans in the country. But the grumbling relates to this question. Why is the U.S. spending more to defend Europe than Europe is spending? And by that I mean dating back to President George W. Bush, President Obama, President Trump, President Biden, all have put forward this goal of 2% of defense spending as a percentage of GDP, which was agreed upon in the 2014 Wales Summit by all members. And yet right now, we're down to um, eight members out of 30. That's actually down from 10 last year who have met that goal. Very wealthy countries, Sweden, Canada, Germany, France, haven't met that goal. Many of them are not even close to meeting that goal. What can we do? Well, isn't it now or never that the NATO countries should, should meet this goal? And I don't believe this is a sustainable situation. We're doing all we can. I fully support it. But my goodness, the American people are looking and saying, where is everybody else? How come these countries can't meet this goal that they've been agreeing to for decades? What's your sense on this? Do we have an opportunity here? I'm working on legislation that would say within five years, if NATO countries don't meet their 2% goal, then Congress will not appropriate dollars for training and deployments to those particular countries. 
What do you think about something like that? And if you're confirmed, will you be very focused on assuring that these countries understand that we're a democracy too? And at a certain point, the American people are going to say, enough. Europe has to defend Europe as much as America has to defend Europe. What do you think of all those issues? Senator, if I'm confirmed, I will work on burden sharing as hard as I can. I am a believer in the Wales Pledge. I'm a believer not just in the 2 percent, but on the 20 and 80 part of the rule, which says that nations should spend at least 20 percent on modernization and acquisition. Uh, I am gratified right now that we hear so many um, positive movements yeah, Germany's in the alliance. Was great. It, it, it's really a great moment. Uh, if I'm confirmed, a big part of my job will be to help our diplomats and the interagency of the United States to convert all of those good intentions into facts. What about legislation I'm working on right now? Sir, if you, you don't mind, I'd, 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 rather, I'd rather not comment on legislation directly, if you don't mind, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Sullivan. Senator Horono, please. 